Hello and welcome to another complete Cambridge IGCSE PE lesson. In this video, we'll break down and simplify nine recent past exam questions on Chapter 2, The Respiratory System. If you enjoy this video, consider subscribing to the channel. Give the video a thumbs up and check out the complete exam preparation course on Udemy, which contains literally everything you need to excel in your IGCSE exam and nothing more. The 53 individual topic videos provide you with mark scheme responses to any question that could be asked and allow you to revise for your exam in an extremely short period of time. Check the link in the description to find out more. Let's begin. Question number one is on topic 2.3 and as always if you head down to the description you can find links to the short summary videos containing literally everything you need to know on chapter 2. Describe what is meant by residual volume for one mark. So what does residual volume mean? This is one of the four breathing volumes that you need to know for the course. And residual volume means the volume of air that remains in the lungs after a full exhalation or out breath. We'll have a look at the mark scheme response. And they've said the volume of air left in the lungs after you breathe out as hard as possible. Question number two, explain the functions of two named muscles involved in normal breathing for four marks. So this one's on the mechanics of breathing and the first thing we should do is name the two muscles involved and they are the diaphragm and the intercostal muscles. So what's the role of these muscles in normal breathing? Well the diaphragm contracts and flattens during inhalation or when breathing in increasing the volume of the chest cavity. The intercostal muscles contract moving the ribcage upwards and outwards during inhalation increasing the volume of the chest cavity also. Let's have a look at the mark scheme because all I've done here is talk about inspiration or breathing in. Okay, and here it says one mark for each named muscle. We've already named both of those. And then one mark for explanation of the function of each muscle. And we could have gone for inhalation or exhalation for either. Okay, so just by talking about inhalation for the diaphragm and the intercostal muscles, I get the additional two marks there, um, giving me four overall. Next question is explain three characteristics of the alveoli that enable gaseous exchange to take place, and this one is worth six marks. So where are those marks going to come from? Well, we need to name three characteristics of the alveoli and then explain how they enable gaseous exchange. So the three ones that I've named are that the alveolar walls are one cell thick, that the alveoli have moist walls, and that the alveoli are surrounded by a network of capillaries. So three marks for those points already. And then I need to explain how they enable gaseous exchange. So the alveolar walls are one cell thick, and this means that the diffusion distance is short, so that gases, oxygen and carbon dioxide, only have a very short distance over which to diffuse. The moist walls of the alveoli allow gases to dissolve and therefore pass through the walls more quickly. And then the capillary network means that there's lots of blood available for the transfer of gases. OK, so what else could we have gone for? We could have talked about the large surface area of the alveoli or the huge number of alveoli which provides a greater area for diffusion uh, to take place or, or more gas can pass through at once, faster diffusion, so any of those points would have got us the mark. And we could have also talked about the elastic fibres contained within the alveolar walls which allows the walls of the alveoli to stretch increasing the surface area slightly during inspiration. So any three of these characteristics appropriately explained would have got us the six marks. Next question. The diagram shows part of the respiratory system with structures labelled A, B, C and B. Name the structures labelled A, B and C for three marks. So naming structures, some basic knowledge here, and we should be able to pick up three marks on any question like this. So A is the trachea or windpipe. B is the bronchi or bronchus, there are two bronchi, uh, one that leads to the left and one that leads to the right lungs. And then C is the intercostal muscles or the muscles that sit between the ribs and enable the rib cage to expand during inspiration or when breathing in. And if we look at the mark scheme, A for trachea, B for bronchus or bronchi and C for the intercostal muscles, an easy three marks. Next question, identify structure D and explain its role in the mechanics of breathing. So very similar to the question we answered uh, just a few moments ago. Structure D, first of all, for one mark is the diaphragm, but we need to now explain its role in the mechanics of breathing. So the diaphragm contracts and flattens or moves downwards, reducing air pressure in the lungs during inhalation or when breathing in. It relaxes and domes upwards, increasing lung pressure during exhalation. So let's take a look at the mark scheme. 
Um, one mark for identifying structure D as mentioned, so diaphragm for one mark, and then two marks for describing its role in the mechanics of breathing. We could have gone for, during inhalation, the diaphragm contracts and becomes flatter, which I mentioned, and increases the chest cavity volume, or reduces pressure in the lungs, which is the point that I went for there. And then during exhalation, the diaphragm relaxes or domes upwards, which I also mentioned, and decreases the chest cavity volume, or increases pressure in the lungs, which again is the point that I went for. Okay, next question is describe each of the following terms. So tidal volume, minute ventilation, and vital capacity, three of the four breathing volumes that you need to know. So tidal volume is the volume of air inhaled per breath during normal breathing. Minute ventilation is the volume of air inhaled or exhaled per minute. And then vital capacity is the maximum volume of air that can be exhaled or breathed out after a full inhalation or in-breath. Okay, so you can take a look at this mark scheme if you like, but the points that I've included here are very close to the mark scheme responses, so we won't spend any more time on that. But moving on to the next question, which is describe the mechanics of breathing during inhalation. So the third time we've had a question um, on the mechanics of breathing already. So the diaphragm contracts and flattens. The intercostal muscles contract, moving the rib cage upwards and outwards. So we're first describing the role of the two muscles during inhalation. And then what's the impact that it has on breathing? So this increases chest cavity volume and reduces air pressure in the lungs, which would of course lead to air moving into the lungs from the atmosphere. So let's have a look at the points that are included in the mark scheme. This orange tick here indicates that I would have actually got five marks had five been available. So let's have a look. It's four marks for four of the following points. So mentioning the diaphragm is worth one mark already. Uh, mentioning that intercostal muscles is worth another mark, and then saying that the diaphragm contracts and becomes flatter or moves down, that's a second mark, and that the intercostal muscles contract and move the ribcage upwards and outwards is another mark. So there's the four marks already, but we would have got another mark if we'd mentioned that these actions cause the chest volume to increase and the pressure to decrease within the lungs. Okay, next question is on topic 2.3, and it's described two named breathing volumes. So we're back on those breathing volumes again. We're going to get two marks this time just for naming two breathing volumes, and then two for the appropriate descriptions. So I've gone for tidal volume and residual volume. We've gone through these already, but tidal volume is the volume of air inhaled or exhaled per breath during normal breathing. It's really important to include during normal breathing there. And then residual volume is the volume of air that remains in the lungs after a full exhalation or out breath. Okay, mark scheme. This has got the uh, names and descriptions of all four breathing volumes. So you can pause the video here and have a look at those if you had a go at this question yourself. Next question, explain how two characteristics of the alveoli enable gaseous exchange. So again, this is looking really familiar and it just highlights how often questions get repeated in exams and shows you the sort of things that you need to be revising um, if you want to do as well as you possibly can. So characteristic one, the walls contain elastic fibers. I've gone for a couple of different ones this time. And the explanation of how that enables gaseous exchange is that it enables the alveoli to expand therefore increasing surface area during inspiration or when we breathe in. The second characteristic is that alveoli are vast in number, and this means that there's a large surface area over which diffusion can take place. So the more alveoli, the greater the area over which diffusion can occur. Okay, what else could we have gone for? There's lots of different points we could have talked about here. We could have said that alveoli are one cell thick, which reduces diffusion distance, that they're surrounded by capillaries. I mentioned that in the previous question that there's a large surface area, which we've just talked about, that the walls of the alveoli are moist, and that the walls of the alveoli contain elastic fibres, which was my first point. Okay, and that is it for this session on Chapter 2, the respiratory system, so the breakdown of nine past exam questions there. Remember to like and subscribe if you benefited from this video, and leave a comment down below if you have any suggestions for how these videos could be improved. As always, I hope you found this lesson useful and I'll see you next time for 13 questions on chapter three, the circulatory system.